smell it? it? Just smells like hot water. Oh yeah. Yeah. That camera does it all, baby. You might not know it, but you just in witnessed the invention of smell vision We're gonna take this, set it over on the stove, let it warm up. We're gonna put some, we're, we're cooking with avocado oil. Cause the avocado oil doesn't break down like your seed oil. So we either use avocado, coconut, or olive oil. But it doesn't matter for this recipe what you choose. Just always buy a good quality virgin olive oil, cold pressed, first press, or else avocado oil is good. And I like coconut oil, but for what I'm doing with this, I'm, what I'm doing is cooking turtle, a snapping turtle. The coconut oil I have has an aroma of coconut, which for some recipes is okay. And it's not troubling, but I'm not using it for this. And I'm going to take a gallon bag, some flour. This is organic flour. I'm going to put that with salt and pepper in that bag to shake up my turtle meat to brown it. Because I'm going to brown my turtle meat. I've got to get it out of the, my package with my weeby fillet knife. Let that juice drain out of there. Get a plate. Smell that. Do you think there's any freezer burn? That what I thought was freezer burn is actually a bone. I don't smell any freezer. Okay. Burn. We should be good. This is a snapping turtle that Mark and I caught this summer when we went turtle trapping. My skillet's going to be ready before I am. We caught this when we were trapping turtles this summer. Right. And we butchered it. I think it was one episode. We're going to brown it. And then we're going to cook it in the oven with a kind of a sauce or a gravy cover in it. Made out of a chicken, cream of chicken soup. It always turns out really good. And even people that don't want wild game can't get enough of this. I usually take it to fam all the family reunions, and I always wait and hang back in line. And I seldom get a piece of turtle because people gobble it up. And vacuum sealing this meat in a bag when you process in the vacuum bag actually gives you a lot better process when you start doing your own meat because my house we do rabbits, squirrels, sometimes beavers, muskrats, turtles. We butcher our own chickens, butcher pigs. We put it all in vacuum seal bag and it extends the longevity of storage. And it's not an expensive thing to do. This really saves on your fingertips when you're breading stuff and you use a lot less flour. It's a lot cleaner method. A little salt and pepper. Oops. Precise measurements is the way to cook good. Good cookery.
And if you don't have enough the first time, you can always put in more. Now I'll get that back hot. It's already sizzling. You ever eat turtle? It's actually very good. The old timers say turtle has seven different kinds of meat in it. I could only identify two. Um, the dark meat, which is those legs and the tail, and that always reminded me of squirrel. And the backbone and the neck are white meat, more flaky type of a meat. Here's the turtle loin right there. We actually went along with dikes and cut it out of from the shell, cut the ribs loose, and then t took a flat bar and pounded it through with a hammer to detach that from the from the from the shell. Hey JT, how are you? Yeah. I might need to turn that down a little. Is this how you cook your turtle, JT? Oh, yeah, I cook it that first. Okay, see you later. I'd talk to you more, but I'm in the... We're probably going to have to do two different skillets because the skillet's about full. JT has really helped me as a good friend. When I had truck trouble before, he's hauled me around, took me up to Memphis to buy a transfer case and a transmission. He's taken me to check my traps, he's fixed my appliances. Plus, if you think I got a lot of stories, he's got them and he has a different area of expertise. So, he's a good guy to have around. He's a good guy to have on your side. People don't realize how good or how bad of a network of people they have surrounding them. So you go to a different area where you're a stranger and you have to develop that all over again or not. It's just when you have people that are willing to help you out Sometimes it seems trivial, but when you're far away from home and you don't have a way to even get around, it makes a difference to have somebody you can call. And that works both ways. To be a, to have a friend, you gotta be a friend. We're gonna just brown this for a while. If you wanna do something. Now when I go back to drive through the country, I go down memory lane most of the time, because I've been there at one time or another. I'm always prospecting for trap lines, and my wife says I always lean over at the bridge, because I, all I want to see is around the corner. Just a little more, a little more. 
if it was a gold rush back in the 1800s, we probably would have went. We're just that kind of a guy. Ah, smells good. All right. Platters on the table, said the great Howard Montgomery. Usually I get this brown, then I'll take my chicken, cream of chicken soup, and I'll pour it into a pan, like pour it into the skillet, and maybe thin it a little bit with water, and just make kind of a nice creamy sauce, and pour over the pieces in the roaster, and then I'll put them in a, a slow, a low oven, like 250 degrees, and I'll just let it cook covered until this is I can stick a fork in this and just twist it and it, it's fork tender all my relatives they could be politically wrong but they're not wrong about turtles You don't have to brown this, but it just adds a, what do I say, adds a layer of flavor to it. You just don't want to burn it. Like I'm close to doing on some of these pieces. That's thermal, at least. That's the term for that. <laughs> you caramelized it. Caramelized snapper? Yep. You're not going to get that at Starbucks. Son of a gun. I'm talking and not cooking. That is perfect. Have you ever been in a quandary where you thought, man, I ought to save that flower? And you let it sit around for a few days. And you think, what the heck was I thinking? And throw it away. Ooh, I lost that one. Probably should have cut that one and that one in two, but we're going whole turtle. I like to cut it in a variety of sizes for the petite readers and for the ones who have a bigger appetite. <laughs> And if you believe that, you don't know me. You know, I don't, I don't think I'm going to cook that rabbit because with what you bought, Last batch. Last call. Hard to believe something so ugly can taste so good. And the guys down here that cook turtles, a lot of them, they'll take the turtle and scald it and take a knife or a wire brush 
and scrape the scales off the outside of the, the not scales, the skin off the, the outer skin off the turtle and they'll have that skin on there and they cook it just like chicken and they'll have a crispy skin on the outside. I've never had it like that. When I was a kid, my, one of the guys in town, this old um, veteran of World War II named Larry Lang, they were over at Briggs Woods Lake over by Webster City, Iowa, and they caught a turtle. And you always hear people talk about turtles as big as a spare tire in the truck or would, wouldn't fit in a wash tub. My parents had a one of those, like a rinse tub for a washing machine. It was square, it was about so big. And that turtle actually just fit in that thing. But I remember my mom had a had one of those porcelain canners. It was like a big bucket about that round. And they put that meat in there to soak after they cleaned the turtle. And the, the, it kept moving for over a day. Just in the water, just flexing. That's the price piece right there. It's like the chicken breast. If you're into that kind of thing. We'll let Mark have his tail. You can tell it sound, it's good quality cream soup when it sounds like a can of strong heart dog food coming out of the can. Best choice, Piggly Wiggly's finest, AGI Grocers. Now I'll rinse these cans out with water, get all the goody out of them. This is going to be a tasty gravy over the turtle. God, who thought it'd already be time to cut grass? Coming from the land of ice and snow, down to green grass and butterflies. If you have a lot of kitchen contraptions, a whisk could probably do a nicer job. This will just get, it'll get done just not quite as quick. But I hate washing whisks for dirty dishes, so I'm going to tough it out with what I have. The magic ingredient besides turtle. This recipe can be also be found in St. Mary's Catholic Cook Catholic Guild cookbook from Shenandoah, Iowa. Which is which is out of print, but can probably be found on Amazon. That along with my famous roasted beaver recipe. It's always a hit at the Knights of Columbus Wild Game Dinner. In fact, 
outside of a little bit of venison and some pheasants, the wild game dinner was more like a tame rabbit supper. But different people have different degrees of wild. Okay, I'm gonna put this in a 250 degree preheated oven until it's fork tender. Sometimes it takes two or three hours. Sometimes it takes two. You just have to check it. Um, when we're eating tame chickens, they're usually less than two months old for the fryers. So they don't have time to really develop any musculature. This is, it's not encouraged. That turtle was probably 15 pounds. So on average, they figure a turtle grows one pound a year in the wild so that'd be like eating a 15 year old cow so it's not a quick fry or a quick cook low and slow baby mm. and it is really good it's good batch i know on a cooking show you're supposed to just go into oh. convulsions with how good it is but just it is really good though i like how it's like as soon as it hits their tongue oh yeah don't even have time to taste mm. it yeah, that's good, man. I'm not sure I need uh, any ketchup. Oh gosh, it's hot. Yeah, I like just like how I do roast beef sandwiches with mustard and hot sauce. You pick this apart once it's cooled off some and make sandwiches. 